In this lesson, we're going to be talking about network attacks. Now, there are a lot of different types of network attacks, and I'm going to go through a few of them here. Let's start with a simple denial of service attack. Of course, I say simple denial of service attack when, in fact, there are a lot of different types of denial of service attacks, and it's really about preventing a resource from being used. So as many resources as you have, as many denial of service attacks that you could have multiplied by some factor, because there are probably a lot of different ways of denying a particular resource or denying access to a particular resource. Let's start out with just a simple flood attack. And I've got a little utility here called NetFlood. And NetFlood does a SYN flood. And a SYN flood is really a classic flooding technique where what we're trying to do is prevent new network connections from being made on a particular server. And that's because there are some finite number of connection requests that can be handled in a particular time period before the server just doesn't have any more availability to take new connections in. Now, over a dozen years or so, there have been a lot of techniques that have come about and have been improved over that time to protect against this classic flooding strategy, but it doesn't stop this type of flooding from happening. And so you may see a sin flood from time to time. And so here's a, a flooding technique, and I could actually do a net flood here, and I'm going to do, I'm actually going to run it against itself here. The first thing I want to do is do a source IP. So I'm going to do that. And then my target is going to be 192.168.1.39. And the port is going to be port 80. I need to be administrator to do that. So I have to do sudo privileges. And, and now I can just run that sin flood. And I'm going to kill it. I don't need to run it for a really long time. I just want to show you that I'm doing a sin flood here. You can see that the sin flood started. So that's one type of attack. Now, there are other types of attack that are probably less likely to be successful, but you never know when you may run across a system that is still vulnerable to this and may actually get attacks against it. So I've got a couple of attacks here like Nesty and Pepsi. Those are attacks against just protocol violations. So, for example, you might have a packet where it's been fragmented into different pieces, and the way it's been told to reassemble that packet, there are some overlaps, and that sometimes causes problems. Or there are sometimes flag settings in different network headers that may cause problems. So those are a couple of types of protocol violations and actually need to do that. So this is the nest T and it's actually making some guesses about some things to do. Um, and it doesn't actually have a help file, but there's nest T that you could run and there's Pepsi is another one. And this one actually has a help file. So you can see the different command line parameters that are required here. So, like I said, there is a couple of different types of protocol violations or protocol anomalies or malformed packet kind of attacks, and there's a lot of them, frankly. You can go looking online for protocol violation attacks or protocol anomaly or, or malformed packet attacks, and you can probably find dozens and dozens and dozens of them. There's actually websites that store those types of attacks, and... Many of them are actually quite old, and so sometimes what you'll get is the source code in trying to compile it. You may find that there are a number of errors because they just haven't kept up with the new technology that exists in the programming libraries that are available now. One other thing that you may be more inclined to see is something like a brute force attack. And a brute force attack is where you're trying to for example, log into a server and a tool like Hydra here 
will actually automate that logon attempt for you. So you can see that it has multiple server services that it understands, and you can feed it logon information in a file or multiple files, and it will actually attempt to do those logons and keep going until either it runs out of logon possibilities or it actually succeeds. So Hydra's a brute force attack tool for attempting to log into systems. And that's one that we could actually use against, for example, SSH, which would be the secure shell, or you may be able to use it against an HTTP server if it's doing HTTP authentication. You can see that it also supports different mail clients like POP3 and IMAP. It will support Telnet and VNC as well if you have a server that is running VNC for remote administration. It supports doing multiple logons in a rapid fashion, automated fashion against a VNC server. And of course, there's also database servers here as well. So there's a lot of different services that Hydra understands, and it will do repeated multiple simultaneous logon attempts. It's actually called Hydra because it's multi-headed, like the um, Greek mythological creature, the Hydra. So it's Hydra because it's multi-headed, meaning it will spawn multiple processes to do these logons very quickly in a short period of time. And again, it's automated, so you're not sitting at the computer trying to type in all of these logon attempts and try to get in that way. You can just run Hydra and it will attempt to log on for you. So that's a brute force log on. So you see a lot of brute force attempts sometimes against web servers. And sometimes that has to do with trying to find directories or files that exist on web servers. So that's a different type of brute force attack. Again, there are tools that will do that sort of thing as well. So there's a lot of different types of network attacks that you'll run into. And in other lessons, we'll go through how you would actually see what's going on and be able to capture network traffic and look at it and also be able to look at logs and figure out what's going on. But just so that you're aware, there's a lot of different types of network attacks and here's just a couple of them that we've gone over in the last few minutes here.